All right, hello everybody, Swiggles here, and this is a mixing session of Gourmet Race from Kirby Superstar that I am doing specially for my friend B-Boy Noe, and uh, this series is just going to be kind of approaching how I put songs together quickly and mix them. Um, it'll be a lot of stream of consciousness, so please pause the video anytime. Uh, I'm not asserting that what I'm doing is right or good. Uh, if you have other ideas, uh, that's fine too. Um, this is just, you know, me in March 2016, how I mix. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through what everything has been recorded first, and then I'll start explaining. First, we'll go with the drums. I'm using Superior Drummer 2, um, with Metal Machine for a lot of the kicks and snares. So uh, the main thing to understand here is I am not mixing inside Superior Drummer. Um, in fact, my kit loaded is really small. It's only 500 megabytes. Um, so what you'll see here is I have a custom kick drum here. Uh, I have a custom snare here, which is also, um, it's a Ludwig Black Beauty, but I'm also using the Ludwig ba Black Beauty from Superior Drummer. They have different... Uh, tuning and sound all together so I combine the snare drum inside my mapping and to do that all you really have to do is right click on the note that you used for snare which is this one and then uh, you know you go to instrument or sorry you go to you know snare here and you just drag it onto the note that you want to combine and then it'll ask you to combine the nodes or replace so I always join so we have two snare drums every time you hear a snare in the song. Um, likewise, that's how the kick drum works. The kick is going every time there's a right and a left. Um, just so that I, I like the sound of those more. And you can really skip this section if you don't care about expansions. Then I have a different uh, symbol. I have replaced all the toms with uh, Ludwig stainless steels. They just sound a little... Uh, um, they've got this like sort of hollow sense, but they're really chuggy. It, it sounds cool in like the modern metal sound. Um, not super important, of course. Uh, the volume's at zero here so that we can get as much volume as we can without too much noise. And then I have, have a lot of just like light mixing of the different microphones in Superior Drummer here, which you can take note of. Um, the, I have, uh, the snares top mic EQ'd a little bit just to give it a little bit of a duck where I don't want it to and I just find that that helps me get rid of some sounds I don't like out of the microphones uh, likewise for the 1176 microphone I'm getting all of that rang in there and just a little bit of the snap by boosting it up here of course we're EQing the snares later but I think the microphones deserve to have a little bit of change um, other than that I have all of these are going to different buses. Uh, like for example, the kicks are going to the Superior Drummer bus one slash two, which will be over here. Just unifies them and gives me a chance to put any insert effects if I wanted to, I don't. Um, and then what else do we have? Um, of course, there's a bus send here. I just never used that for some reason. Um, next we've got Rack Toms. Our uh, rack tom one two three floor one and two some people don't use the rack toms but i do um and all of them have pretty much just like accentuated bottom end and a little bit of high end trying to get like some cool sounds here it's really not integral to the sound uh but i found that this is what works for mine um notice that there's close to no bleed on anything except for the snare here the reason why i'm doing this is just because i can um, having the hi-hats come out through the snare is just uh, a little nice brightness added to the snare and uh, the, the thing with bleed is uh, I found that I've gotten really muddy sounds that while they might seem more realistic they just sound crappier uh, with too much bleed um, the last important thing of course I have my overheads uh, I actually like them a little closer maybe like 67 each side that's just the nature of the sound of my guitars and I usually place my rhythm guitars as you'll see down here 100% uh, left and 100% right so it doesn't make sense for me to have the 
everything shoved up there. Um, the bleed for the overheads is a little carefully constructed. Um, oh, I should have this clicked. Um, we're gonna have like the snare a little less because it cuts through the room. And then I've reduced the tom so there's not too much bleed and I pushed the hi-hats to the top. Now the reason for that is because I don't like the hi-hat microphone too much. I think it makes things feel one-sided. And then of course uh, I have my actual uh, X, meaning the extra uh, metal machine toms and uh, cymbals and uh, snares and whatnot. Oh, not the kick. Definitely don't want the kick in your overhead. Uh, so that's quick fix. Um, and now we have the ambient mics. So for those of you guys who are still like unsure about how drum recording works, usually there's a microphone placed in the room of uh, where they're recording the drums. And um, basically there's one that's going to be closer, one that's mid away of course, and one that's farther away. Right now I'm just using, so I'm using the mono, which is obviously just a mono processed uh, sound, kind of thickens it up. And then I have a mid microphone. This one's capturing snare and all these crashes and, um, and cymbals. And this one's just dedicated to snare and the toms. Uh, I just like having that so I can balance out how you know, boomy it is with the close mics and stuff. And I don't lose the sense of like uh, tightness and attack. So I just have these mics. They're all going out to my room. No bus. I just felt like I'm not going to process them at all. So, um, and that's all there really is to it here. Um, these are my kicks. These are my snares. This is overheads. Um, and this neutralizes it. So basically the panning is the same. Um, same for this one. I'm not sure why it's default panned a little bit here and a little bit here. Uh, so let me just center that, um, or you can just do this, cancels out, same thing. Um, 7, 8 is my toms, and all these volume adjustments are just based on what's happening. You can really just play with it. Um, and yeah, so that's Superior Drummer for you. If we listen to just the drums right now, and I'm going to take off, uh, my bus effects. So that sounds all right. Um, now, um, what I have written here, a lot of the velocities are pretty high up. That's just a result of the way I programmed. Um, I found that if you have the velocities really low in some sort of, uh, in some kit pieces, they just really don't shine and they don't cut through. So I, I take it sounding fake this time especially because obviously this is very impossible to play perfectly. So um, I programmed my drums in MIDI here and let's just go over what I'm running on everything. So this is the kick drum. So I'm going to pause here. Um, this is FabFilters Pro C. Any compressor should be fine, of course. Um, I've set the threshold to be minus 22 after listening just to have a tiny bit of gain reduction Get like a really punchy kick now the thing about uh, metal kicks of course is you want to have The punch there, but you don't want it to get in the way because there's so many kicks coming in So I tend to have like a pretty fast attack, but not like lightning speed and then as quick a release as I'm allowed and the ratio is pretty tight at 5 so if you listen, you can see tiny bits of gain reduction here. Uh, the volume's dropping just a little bit, so that's fine with me. I have a little bit of the dry mixed in. This is a technique called parallel compression. It allows you to have a bit of the natural sound along with the compressed sound, which is kind of fun to mix together. So, and of course, uh, in my EQ, I'm raising a little bit of the bass just because of how the kick sounds right now. I'm killing a little bit of that kick. <laughs> crunchiness. I'm adding a little bit of that uh, center sound that kind of comes off as like a 
it almost meshes with the guitars in my opinion and then I'm getting the clickety click right here with a little boost and then I'm cutting off um, pretty harshly um, at the low end so there's no boominess coming from the uh, kick and then I'm also cutting off the high end there So that's all right. My bad. So that's sounding all right. Now let's take a look at the snare. So the snare drum is a little bit of uh, pain. I've I've kind of surgically found what works for this setup right now, and I'm getting a lot of the the high end smack here and I'm getting the ring out from here. I'm doing a pretty steady cutoff below let's say um, what 120 Hertz just because we don't really need that much bass in here and then I'm trying to take out little frequencies I don't like which of course you just need to make a note in Pro-Q or any EQ software and search for where it sounds really awkward And the key here also is to not have it be too over compressed. So if you look here, we're not losing that much volume. The volume's just barely going down each hit. Of course, uh, the attack's pretty slow because we don't want to stop it from getting the snappiness, but we want it. Uh, we want a fast release so that we can uh, stop the compression once it's unnecessary. The ratio is a little higher here at 2.5, but. So that volume is pretty acceptable, the EQ is fine. Now what I'm doing here with uh, FabFilter Saturn, which is called a tape saturation plugin, you can find tons of these online, um, is basically I'm, I clicked up here to uh, create four different divisions of frequencies. Um, see this one's 142, this one's 900, or 1000, uh, this one's 4300. And each one of these is affecting how uh, much added saturation or like the tube in this case the setting of distortion to add to it which just it warms up stuff it sounds more realistic and sometimes it can even make stuff punchier So that's pretty okay. And again, I apologize that a lot of this is stream of conscious and me listening, but uh, I guess that's the point of a guide. As we add like reverb to the to the entire kit and so on later in mixing, you'll start to understand why it sounds a little roomy, but um, we'll tweak it as we go. Now the overheads, um, two stereo microphones recording the top of the kit. Now it might seem like, it might seem like I'm cutting off a lot of frequencies, but all of this is the kick drum, the snare, stuff that's in the low end that we don't need and we're getting from the room mics anyway. 
So I just have a little bit of cuts to take away the harshness of symbols, and then we're good to go. So that's pretty okay. I don't like compressing overheads, um, just because I feel like it's going to cause things to get way louder than I need it to. Um, now with the hi-hat, I usually don't mix the hi-hat for metal, um, but if I had to, it'd be kind of tight, uh, slow attack, and mixed really quietly. A lot of gain reduction here because I just want it to be a constant, kind of like in electronic music. See, it's not a bother now. I usually try to mix drummer perspective, which means that all the kit pieces are placed where they should be according to the drummer. So that means the toms are that way, and the hi-hat's going to be on the left for a right-handed drummer. Now the toms get compressed pretty tight. Let's go to the EQ first. So I'm cutting off a lot of the bassiness so they don't you know, remain there forever. And then I've got a uh, few cuts here. Let's see if I can find a good spot. So we have our bass frequencies controlled here by cutting them off too low and we get a nice bit of the hit attack here. Now some people like to gate them and I've been experimenting but right now I don't see the need. It's not it's not burying itself in there. The toms are pretty okay. One thing that's important is not to let the toms uh, flush out and mud out everything. So I mix them as low as I can. So they're audible, but not a big issue. Now the room microphone, we compress to, uh, you know, all good God in hell. So we've got 8.65 to one ratio. That means it takes 8.65 decibels for it to go up one, very tight. So we have a pretty fast attack and uh, you know fast release here. Um, not the fastest I suppose um, because we just want this to fill out a lot of the noise. We're not necessarily making this what the kit is going to sound like. Your drum bus is going to have a uh, few things in it. First thing let's look at is my EQ. Um, there's a lot of small surgical cuts here that I felt necessary. I think that it could go simpler than this. But basically, I want a little bit of a boost in the tiny little mid spot so we just get some punch there. Uh, maybe raise some of the ring, cut out a little bit of the roominess so we still keep it dry, and slowly ease off the high end of the drum kit. Now what we're doing next is compressing the entire kit. Now I have a ratio of 5 to 1 which is pretty aggressive. Um, the threshold is going to be at minus 22 so that we can cut off you know a good few decibels. This is how many this is how much volume we're losing. Uh, just observe here. Now, in a lot of ways, what a compressor does is it makes the quietest parts louder, the loudest parts quieter. So you can tell that now that I've started adding compression, our kick drum sounds really loud and our snare was getting loud. So I've been making adjustments. We have a pretty fast attack and, you know, fast release. Another thing to note is that I have an output gain just to make up for lost, but we're not losing too much. So we might need to actually compress it more. I also have the dry mix knob or the uh, parallel compression um, pretty high up. One way you could do this also is just create a new track, call it a uh, parallel comp, 
uh, hit routing, receive from the drum bus, and then compress this track with your favorite compressor. Maybe you have a free one like Rhea Comp. And then boom, you can compress it however you want and then you can compare. Uh, just easier with FabFilter, but this is perfectly fine as well. Um, so let's take a listen and try not to over compress, lose the, the dynamics. Let's go to a scarier part. Now the other thing we do is add just a little bit of, a, of tape saturation and I like raising uh, the mids, trebles, and presence in my tape saturator, just anything that'll give it a little more life. Um, we can find some free ones online as well. Uh, I've got plenty of them that are free. Uh, just something to give it life, of course. So. Sometimes it's good to listen in mono as well, so you can tell what it's going to sound like in different perceived uh, sound systems, like a phone. I just got a really cool idea to put in there and I didn't want to lose it. So um, what we're going to do here now is uh, look at the guitars. So let's start with the rhythm guitars and what they're doing. The most important thing about guitars is to make sure they still sound like guitars at the end of the day for rock music and otherwise. So I use positive grid bias effects, probably the, one of the best purchases I've made. Um, that being said, I think you can get away with any sort of guitar recording sound as long as you're playing well in tune, on time, and mixing it properly. Now the way I have my tone set up is with a noise gate down here. Um, now the noise gate is basically uh, going to cut off my volume whenever I stop playing and the speed at which it does that is the decay knob you know kinda like the volume decaying so I keep this one low just because that's the global one I have a second one here with a little bit of low uh, settings now the reason why you don't want to have super high noise gate is because not only does it cut off all your harmonics your sustain your notes um, well that's basically it um, and I want my volume to be nice and loud and I want it to feel a little less sloppy. If we were going for something genty, we would manually cut off a lot of stuff anyway. So it's kind of okay. Um, I don't actually use this compressor so let me close that. Now I have a Tube Screamer pedal here with just barely any drive um, and a lot of volume. Now the point of this is to overdrive and um, the guitar signal from being dry to something very distorted and dirty. Uh, the tone knob affects in a, it's like an EQ. So I have it set around uh, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half. That gives me a bit of a darker uh, rhythm, which I think fits better in a mix. Um, the first amp I have here, you can check out the settings was an insane 5153 amplifier that someone generously posted on Tone Cloud in their amp. And uh, I adapted it from there and changed the cabinet, of course, which is 
4x12 Celeste T75 model, SM57 placed around the edge, uh, again going for the darker sound, and uh, I have an EQ here, this is the zero line, so a lot of cuts and maybe a little bit of a raise at 4K. Um, I have two cuts here, the low cut sitting around like 51, not even, just so that I don't have any sub bass to worry about, and the 10K cuts around 18, let's say. Now the other amp hat is a uh, tread plate. So the tread plate's kind of like the Metallica sound. It's, it's going to be bulgy. It's not going to have a lot of characteristics on its own, but I keep everything very close to 5 as you can see. And the cabinet that we're using here is a Celeste V30 with a different microphone just to get you know a bit of a unique sound. We're closer to the center, so we get more of an edge. And uh, we cut the mids a little, mostly V-shape, little boosts here, similar high cut, low cuts. Um, you know, if you're really down to copy the tones, uh, please feel free to. They're all on Tone Cloud. Um, just look up Swig's Rhythm, you'll find them. Um, but yeah, so that's just the sound we're going for, and this is how it sounds raw. So my playing is pretty sloppy, but it'll get the job done. First thing we're going to do is add an EQ. And we're going to try to uh, observe where the bass sits, where uh, the leads sit, and fit our guitars in the middle. So we still got so much bulge here, so I like to do a little cut. Let's just This is where all the lead guitars are trying to play, but it's getting in the way, so we're gonna take out just one more cut. After EQing, it helps to re-listen to your song and see if the volume changed uh, significantly from all the cuts. Alright, cool. Um, some people like to compress guitars. I don't see the need right now, so I'm just going to go to the next part. Now, I have a program, an extension in Reaper called SWS. You can look it up online. I'll post a link maybe uh, that'll help find it. It's basically full of all sorts of different things you can do with Reaper, and it also comes with a lot of free VSTs. And I want to show this one because it's basically a stereo widener so whatever stereo you know uh, instruments you're using it can make them appear even wider and all we have to do is just boost the width here so let's listen to how it sounds at uh, or let's try zero just solo the rhythms Very nice. And the thing about this, most of all, 
is that we're not going to make it super stretched out and sparse. It's still heavy. And the reason why we feel it's heavy is because of the base. Now the base is sitting straight down the center and it's going to be the key to gluing everything together in this really sloppily made one minute song. Uh, but let's take a listen to how the bass sounds with close to no effect. Um, you know what? Let's do one better. This is the bass, literally. One track. Now, if we add EQ, all I've done here is increase the picking, cut off the sub bass, cut off some of the highs. And this is called a DI or direct input track. Now we can even compress this one a little, but right now I'm pretty happy with the other two. Let's take a look at what I have in my amp. So what I did is I recorded the bass through three different tracks, all the same performance. You can copy and paste, it doesn't matter because they're all centered, so there's not going to be any phase cancellation. It'll only be constructive frequencies. So if we open up positive grid here, we have a clean bass sound that I've also EQ'd, so let's take a look. I have a noise gate, um, a little bit tighter. I can actually use the built-in one, uh, which I forgot to turn on, of course. Now the sensitivity is higher on this pedal, so it's going to cut off more of my sudden mutes better, which I find important in metal bass. Now we have a compressor pedal here. Um, what this does is it makes the quietest notes loudest, loudest notes quieter, which means that all my flubby low notes are going to be fairly well compressed. So for example, we have this uh, blend here, and actually this isn't my most up-to-date clean sound, so let's load that. What the compressor uh, pedal is doing here is it's blending about 40% uh, compressed and the rest isn't. Um, we have a slow attack so we can get a lot of those accents and dynamics without losing anything. Um, we have like a volume gain and we have a brighter tone um, boost here and as you can see the signal is split so we're right now here. And then I increase the sustain so we're not cutting off too much. I have a GK800 bass amp with a blank cab, so it's just bypassed. And everything's kind of standard. I just want this one to sound like a solid, deeper bass amp. So let's take a listen. So the effect of that is um, you're hearing a very sub bass friendly sort of sound. So basically that's what this clean amp does. Now I have a, a certain setting for my specific bass that'll emphasize some of the subs. Um, we don't have too much mud because we're cutting down some of these 500s, 120s. Then we get a little bit of the treble. So you can still use this for pick bass pretty nicely uh, for something like funk, slap. Um, we have a gain boost just because of how quiet it is. Now the second path is actually uh, deceiving. This is also a bit of a DI, except it's compressed. So the amp and cabinet is bypassed. So we have a compressor going in that loads a little bit of volume for the DI. Um, starts at a quick threshold, reduces a little bit of the gain with a slower attack, and a fast release, which is kind of aggressive, uh, 4.0 ratio. Um, and just gives you this nice, even, but deep uh, bass sound. Um, it's a little precise, and I've even backed off a little on the subs. No changes there. And then I want to get some of that finger noise and picking noise. So with the DI and the clean bass amp in bias effects, it's pretty solid combination. Um, and my EQ, uh, if I didn't show, is just again, we're trying to kill off some of that too deep bass. 
Maybe we can raise it a little. Let's hear how these two sound together again. Now, the thing that makes this metal is my metal bass tone. And what happens here is we're going to look at our bias effects and we're going to go into my EQ. And basically what we have here is a very pristine, fairly compressed, and uh, thoroughly saturated uh, bass tone that will kind of fit the bill. So uh, before this looks too scary, we've got a tight noise gate, a similar compressor that blends a little more of the first compressed signal with a fast attack, um, you know, like a kind of weak tone, uh, just like your basic c compression of uh, a lot of these like sub hits. Now we have a drive pedal, which is really saturating our signal here. And uh, I'm going to turn off these so you can hear it in a second. And we're doing a volume boost. So basically we're hitting like this trebly area and getting a very precise slice. So that might sound like the worst thing you've ever heard in your life and you now regret listening to it. Let me load up the absolute latest build of this tone. Um, what happens there is after we compress it in the exact same manner, you know, tight ratio, a little bit of a gain reduction going on here. Um, we have some boosts, slower attack. We split it off into a guitar amp itself with very little gain so we don't lose the notes. And we just crank the crap out of it. Um, and the EQ is kind of like surgically made uh, inside here in order to uh, pull out some of the noises that match with the guitars. And ultimately what we're trying to do is bridge this area in the EQ spectrum, which is bass, as well as the guitar, which is like all over here. So if we can get this area to play nicely, we have a good sound. So that's what's going on there. This second part is a very clean amp again, just straight out. A lot of this may seem redundant, but I'm basically building up the tone in layers uh, that I can control. So the EQ here is dedicated to the sub bass side. Um, we can even raise that a little. And all together, what we do is look at the EQ and let's start mixing. Again, where the guitars start, I want to make the bass kind of sit one out.
So that's sounding pretty solid for the bass. Um, obviously the lead guitars are kind of still toying with me, so let's take a look at what I'm doing here. So my lead tone is very similar um, to the rhythm tone and uh, in that it's still a fairly overdriven sound with uh, two different cabinets and kind of just trying to get a very smoothened out and even a little darker uh, tone. But this one obviously sits higher. So we're gonna have the same kind of drive pedal, noise gate settings. We're gonna go for a little more drive um, so that we can saturate it, make something fun to play. Um, we've got gain at five, a little less bass, mids and trebles and presence are all sitting very close to the, um, to the 12 o'clock or five position. And then our volume is just what's carrying the the real power. The EQ here is just trying to focus on the mid range being clear because that's where your voice shines out. And likewise, our amp, which is a plexiglass or a Marshall uh, plexi uh, simulation, is uh, just you know sitting all around 12 o'clock. This this is a more hairy amp. Uh, it's going to be smoother too. So we sit around the edge, get a. Uh, you know, that brighter uh, sound from the 5153 and a darker one from this. Just ultimately trying to get smoothness. Celeste T75s for our cabinet. Something a little strong, but not too dark or too bright. And then we're just cutting out some of the spots that I hit up here, you know, back and forth. And then we have a simple delay pedal here. I don't like the delays in bias effects that much, at least a free version. So. Um, we're just going to have one of those and we're going to have a big hall reverb just barely mixed in, mixed into another reverb, which is set to hall mode, but with different times, just so that we have a nice kind of blend. And I'm going to raise this a little bit. So that's not half bad. Same thing goes for the lead two, except it's with Guitar Rig 5. Um, and I'm also using Valhalla Shimmer, which is a uh, really powerful um, delay pedal that, um, or VST rather, and it creates like a very wide space. Um, I just recommend any sort of chain of delays. Um, for my second, lead guitar I wanted something that would load up faster and guitar rig loads much faster so I have a noise gate a scream pedal as well a van 51 which is based on the 5150 amplifier um, and we have an impulse response loader uh, just you know a cabinet that's simulating a Mesa rectifiers v30 cabinet something dark um, a little bit of scoop here and basic delay and basic reverb. You can recreate this with any similar plugins. Um. Alright, so now we're going to listen in on Fab Filter and try to cut off anything too low and we're going to try to keep the tinniness out of our mix. There's a lot of build up here, so I just want to get rid of a little bit of it. Obviously our volume went down, so I want to restore that.
Now I'm going to add a compressor here and the goal of this is just to control the volume. So I'm going to keep the ratio pretty low, attack, uh, we'll start at 50 and 50 release of course and just see if we can smoothen it. <laughs> I like to listen at uh, quieter volumes and then louder and see if the, the balance is the same. Just like with mono, cross check. I might compress the guitars now just because it's getting on my nerves. Uh, we're gonna go to like a hundred to start. Ratio of like two uh, and move the threshold pretty high up. Remember, lead guitars can be like uh, vocals, but they're not necessarily treated as such when we listen to them. Like sometimes they can be too harsh, so. So that's sounding pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to keep this as is right now for a simplistic sort of approach. So now I'm going to add reverb. Now for those of you guys who don't know, uh, reverb is, I, in my opinion and many's, uh, best added as separate instead of adding a VST to every single track. Um, the reason for this is because it'll save you processing power. Um, because reverb is obviously very difficult to uh, create. It's like copying a clip or a sample of your uh, track and playing it over and over and over to get the effect. So what I have is I created a track with the plugin Reverb and I loaded an impulse response. You can find them all over the internet with uh, the type of reverb I wanted. So for this one, I'm using a plate, which is For this one, I'm using a plate, which is uh, a type of reverb I find goes pretty cool with drums. So let's just so let's just receive from. Actually, let's do this. Let's send everything except for the kick drum to this what I'm calling a reg verb. So we get like the feeling of being in a room. It's a little uh, widening. So that's kind of cool. Now I'm going to add a different kind of reverb and I'm going to add a gate, a noise gate that cuts off after, after the reverb is finished for the snare. And the reason why I'm going to do that is so that we can have these big pulsing snare strikes and then they'll just be over when we need them to be. So I have the threshold at like 20 and attacks at like 4 ms uh, long release. So let's... So this is kind of 80s friendly. Let's hear it. Without. Now without.
Now during parts like this it may seem a little annoying, so you can cut it back, but I personally like to widen up my snare hits. Now the last thing I'm going to do is add a cray verb, as I call it, which is like a crazier reverb, and I'm going to give that to uh, just the lead guitars to widen their sound. So this is a model of, uh, I believe, a uh, Chicago uh, performance stage. So it's going to be very wide, very reverby and reflective. So that's sounding pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with that. Now uh, there's a few things we can do, uh, one of which, um, by the way, this is the bass compression that I totally skipped over. Um, we may not need it to be so tight because we're losing a little bit of the bassy low end. Now, what is this crazy machine? This is sidechain compression. So the way we do this is we're sending a signal from our kick to our bass saying, go down whenever I'm up. So all we have to do is take this kick, send to our bass bus where all of our bassness is. Now click routing. Now change the send to three, four. What this does is it tells the base bus, hey, I'm special, I'm on a different road, so treat me as your th how you treat your 3-4 people. Now, uh, FabFilter's uh, uh, sidechain compressor, or any sidechain compressor, just needs to know external instead of internal. That means it's waiting for some separate um, instrument, and you can even click here and uh, boom, stereo sidechain, three, sidechain, four, and now you know how to route. Um, if you wanted to call them like five, six, you could just plus plus and change it. Um, so basically what's happening is every time we get a kick, it's gonna go through here now because we're in the expert mode. And we're just gonna reduce the volume of the bass a little bit every time to make space. So we can audition and cut off a little bit. So the side is the kick. And now... So what I'm doing here basically is the side mix is how much of the side chaining element, like the kick, is actually um, going in. So we can raise it to make sure that it does compress. And then the mid level is how much do you want it to come out as a result. So we're, we're basically gaining as, as a way to stop it from being so loud. Now I only want a little bit because I don't want to screw this up. So we can make the attack uh, like uh, five. Let's try that.
So I can dig that. And now I think we have everything we need to start finalization of a mix, which includes things like mastering. And all we need to really do is um, see where our mix has failed us as far as presentation. Where, where do we need to control? So let's take a listen and I'll start cutting off stuff. So I'm going to cut off the bottom and the top pretty much, but gently. Gotta scoop a little bit of the mids. Okay, so just listening through, um, our overall mixes EQ should be done. Let's take a listen. Now the biggest takeaway is when you go to mono especially, you can hear the vocals or the lead parts or the stuff on top. That's the stuff that you really want to emphasize without making it be car karaoke night, which is where, uh, that's what I call a song where the vocalist is like up here in volume and then everything else is here. And there's this awkward gap of silence. That's pretty okay. Now I'm gonna load in Isotopes Mastering Suite, um, but we can really do a lot of this stuff one by one. I'm just not gonna. Um, let's see, there we go. The main key ingredients that we're gonna play with here is the multiband compressor. Um, and what this does is it takes the individual sections of frequencies and it compresses them differently and lightly. What that's going to enable us to do is have very good control over just the boominess and just the tinniness, but not ruin the actual song. So watch me as I try to avoid too much uh, gain loss.
I also place the bands where there's an obvious division. Uh, around 160 is definitely where the guitars and the bass cross over. I'm trying to get just a couple, not like five or anything higher than five. That's okay. And again, I have this volume up here so I can hear it right now. I'm going to change that when we limit. Well, I won't necessarily have to, but just no clipping. So then I'm going to use some stereo imaging to pull back the center um, and widen the guitar as it's listen. And now we're going to do the same kind of sa uh, tape saturation as before, just Isotopes version. I'm going to use the tape, try not to modify too much. This is how much it'll get tapied up, and this is how much of that tapiedness you can hear. going on there. That should be okay.
This is sounding pretty solid. The last thing we're gonna do is add a limiter. So I'm gonna load up FabFilters Pro L limiter. Um, I'm gonna set it to minus zero two uh, decibels. This is the equivalent of minus two, um, which usually you can compare uh, to another song. It's very important to have reference tracks. I'm gonna have intro sample protection, or I think it's detection, what is it? Uh, Inter sample peaks. Okay, so we can make sure that there's no glitches. We're going to use the minus 32 dB scale. This is the ballpark we want before it starts clipping. Um, Death Magnetic by Metallica is up here. David Dave Brubeck's Take 5 is down here. Classical music's, you know, here. Rock music can be around here. So let's see how that sounds. So obviously like after mastering So I would highly recommend taking massive amounts of breaks and doing this over the course of a lot longer just to make sure that you can actually evaluate fairly how this you know song is going to sound. So if we rendered out, for example, Gourmet Race, let's do MP3, I'm going to keep it uh, 320 kilobits per second, best rate possible. Let's just render that out. You can also check out how loud you are based on how much of a brick you've created here. Alright, now you can give this a playback, of course, and give it a test. That was pretty good. Um, there was a problem with the cutoff, so we'll render that out. And obviously I don't consider this to be a very good arrangement. It's kind of nutty over the top, spurred, um, over aggressive, blah, blah, blah. But hopefully um, this gives you some insight on what I do, what you could do, um, and opens up a lot of suggestions. And um, if you have a song that you would like me to mix on here, um, 
give me a private message on facebook.com slash swigglesrp or tweet at me at swigglesrp um, sending me the stems um, and if I have you know the time and the demand from you guys I will uh, either stream and record or just record myself going at it and hopefully this will be a cool learning experience uh, thank you guys so much for watching uh, check out bboy noe at youtube.com slash user uh, bboy noe for some awesome electronic and video game related music coming up really soon and uh, peace out <laughs>